Hey guys, Sarah Kalina here, and today I'm going to be ranking the princesses on Once Upon a Time, so stay tuned. Alright, so basically what I'm going to be doing is ranking the princesses on Once Upon a Time. The only rule being that they have to also be Disney princesses as well, so no Emma or Lucy. So, yeah. And also, I will be looking at them from seasons 1 to 7, so all the seasons of Once Upon a Time. And those that have, like, you know, season 7 duplicates, I guess we can call them. Um, yeah, I'll specify which one I'm talking about in the ranking. I know, it's confusing, but you'll get it in the video. Um, and also, I will probably end up revealing some plot details from all seven seasons of Once Upon a Time, so this is your blanket spoiler warning. If you haven't seen Once Upon a Time, all seven seasons, go watch it, come back here, or risk being spoiled. Okay. So, in 14th place, I have Rapunzel as played by Alexandra Metz. <sighs> oh boy. Okay, so this has to be the biggest disappointment. Once Upon a Time introduced Rapunzel in the Season 3, Episode 14, The Tower. Basically, she consumes Nightroot to get rid of her fears, but her fears manifest as herself, and David helps her destroy her fear, and then she's reunited with her parents. That's it. She was only in one episode and honestly really didn't do much in said episode. So, yeah, it was great to see a woman of color portraying Rapunzel. But the show did nothing with her. So it was just a huge disappointment all around. Um, in 13th place, I have Merida. Now, I think Merida suffered most by being in season five because season five was trying to deal with so many different characters. Most of her appearances were in the first half of season five when the show was doing the Dark Swan arc and the Camelot stuff. So Merida just kind of slipped through the cracks a little bit. Like she had like her own episodes type thing, but she didn't she wasn't really memorable because she kind of got lost in the shuffle of, you know, Emma's the dark one and all the Camelot stuff happening and trying to connect the pieces of Camelot to Emma being the dark one. And Merida just sort of fell through the cracks. In 12th place, I have Mulan. Oh gosh, okay. This breaks my heart to have Mulan so low because Mulan is one of my favorite Disney princesses. One of my favorite Disney characters. <sighs> but Once Upon a Time did not do much with her. Like, I don't even think she had her own episode. Now that I think about it. I think she was just sort of in a bunch of episodes. But didn't really do anything and we didn't really get to explore her as a character because she wasn't really the focus of any episode. Um, there was just so much potential that the show did not do anything with, especially with the reveal that Mulan likes women. Like, yeah, it didn't work with Aurora. Um, I'm kind of glad it didn't because I didn't really see the chemistry there, but I really liked her with Red. Honestly, more than I like read it with Dorothy, but you know, that's besides the point. This could have been the show's chance to feature an L LGBTQ plus romance front and center before season seven's Alice and Robin, and they didn't do anything with it. <sighs> that just breaks my heart. <laughs> okay, in 11th place, I have Aurora. So to me, Aurora had good moments but ultimately she was just kind of there like her first moments in the enchanted forest type thing like when she um is awoken by prince philip's true love kiss and all that fun stuff 
And then when she's, you know, with Mulan and Emma and Snow, like, those were her most memorable memorable moments. And those were some of my favorite moments with her. Um, but really, once Snow and Emma just left, Aurora became unforgettable. Like, yeah, she made appearances in season three and four. But I can't for the life of me remember what she did. Like, I know that there was a episode of Mommy and Me group where, like, Cinderella was there with her kid and Snow was there with her, with hers and Aurora was there with hers. So, that's about all I remember. Um, so, yeah, not much to remember in her later appearances, but... Her first appearances were pretty memorable and I really enjoyed her dynamics with Mulan and Emma and Snow. In 10th place, I have Ariel. Now, Ariel was slightly more mem memorable than Aurora, but I just felt like they didn't know what to do with her. Like, I really enjoyed her friendship with Snow and her friendship with Belle and then her friendship with Jasmine. And I wish that those friendships and everything could have been fleshed out more. And that they could have done more stuff with Ariel. Because, again, a lot of untapped potential in regards to Ariel. Um, yeah. In ninth place, I have Anna. Okay. I didn't hate the Frozen arc. Unpopular opinion? I don't know. But I really didn't hate it. I actually really enjoyed it. It was one of my favorite arcs. And, you know, it was adapting the Snow Queen story more than Disney's Frozen did. And, I mean, I get it. But, um, the issue with it was Anna didn't really get to do much. And it seems odd because it's a Frozen arc. So, Anna, being a character from Frozen, should have been able to be in the storylines but she wasn't like the story was about Emma and Elsa and Ingrid um and like there's the moment where um Emma and Elsa are going to confront Ingrid because you know the curse and all that fun stuff and Anna is just basically designated babysitter for Neil, Snow, David, and Kristoff and it's like why are we not doing more with Anna like this is a frozen arc. This is about family. This is about being accepted. And Anna's just there. Like, <sighs> I wish Anna played more of a role in the frozen arc rather than being sidelined. But I did like her. So she's a ninth. <laughs> In 8th place, I have Cinderella as played by Danya Ramirez. So this is season 7 Cinderella. <sighs> yeah, she was the central focus of season 7's... What are we calling it? A soft reboot? Like, seriously, what are we calling season 7? Um, anyways, whatever. She wasn't that bad. Like, a lot of people love to hate on her and stuff like that. But I don't think she was that bad. I think... Um, she was pretty good, but she suffers by being season seven's Snow White. And what I mean by that is, you know, in season one, we saw Snow White basically being a badass. Like, she's like got a sword and she's fighting her own battles and it's great. And then... Season 7 comes around and it's basically the same thing as Season 1. Except this time we have Cinderella playing the role of Snow White. Where she's fighting her own battles. You know, she's got her own sword too. And it's like... <sighs> that was, I think, the main problem. Um, it was just difficult to see her be a carbon copy of Snow White in a season that was already a carbon copy of Season 1. Um... But I did enjoy her on some level, so she's an ace. 
Now, in seventh place, I have Cinderella as played by Jessie Schramm. Um, she wasn't in many episodes. But she was, in some ways, one of the more memorable guest princesses we got. Um, I enjoyed that we essentially got to see her Cinderella story play out. But also tying it to the fairy tale of Rumpelstiltskin in a way that... It, you know, the show didn't really do before or after with, you know, Rumpelstiltskin being like, give me your firstborn child type thing. And it's like, I don't know. I I really kind of enjoyed Cinderella as played by Jessie Schramm. So she's in seventh, I guess. <laughs> um, in sixth place, I have Rapunzel as played by Gabrielle Anwar. So... <laughs> Season seven's Rapunzel um, is so high on this list, admittedly, because of the twist that Lady Tremaine was actually Rapunzel. Um, I think, you know, it was a great and unique twist for the show to take um, in what was, you know, a pretty predictable season seven. Um you know, because Once Upon a Time had basically stuck to the princesses are the heroes, the villains are the villains. Yes, the princesses can do bad things. Yes, the heroes can be... Re yes, the villains can be redeemed, but they had never made a princess a villain. And because of that, I really enjoyed this twist. And because she was playing the role of Lady Tremaine more than she was playing the role of Rapunzel, it made for a very fun and interesting take on the princess. In fifth place, I have Belle. Now, Belle was a pretty main character on the show. Um, but she was really the focus of the show. Like, she never really had her own story, and I feel like season six we got to see, you know, her be a little bit more front and center. Um, but other than that, like, she was never really the focus of the episode. She never really had an episode. Um, there were episodes and storylines where she was allowed to shine, but... Even when they were heading off to Neverland, like, to rescue Henry, like, Rumpel's literally like, no, 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 you stay here. And, you know, I'm kind of upset that she never got to go on the adventure with the gang, but, I mean, we did get her and Ariel kind of being badasses together, which I really enjoyed. So maybe I'll let it go. <sighs> I just wish we got to see Belle leading her own storylines more. In fourth place, I have Jasmine. Now, I enjoyed Jasmine and her friendship with Ariel in the flashbacks and her friendship with Snow in present day Storybrooke. But she didn't really do much. Like, I feel like this is a common thread with a lot of these princesses on Once Upon a Time is they don't really do much. Um... Even in the quest to find Aladdin, which is essentially what she wanted to do. Even with that, she didn't do much. Like, I would have loved to have seen her working with Regina and Emma to find Aladdin. Like, that would have been a really fun trio to watch. But because she was only in one season, it wasn't as noticeable as it was with Belle. So, she's a little bit above Belle. In third place, I have Snow White. Yes, the princess that started it all, both in the Disneyverse and in the Once Upon a Timeverse, um, is in third because Snow White was awesome in the first few seasons. But despite that, she didn't really do much in the later seasons, and she started becoming annoying. Like... Her Mary Margaret cursed Storybrooke persona was really annoying in season one when they were all under the curse. But 
Um, she became more bearable, a lot more bearable, when the curse was broken. But Storybrooke Snow White was just not as amazing as Enchanted Forest Snow White. But Enchanted Forest Snow White was really amazing. So I'm placing her in third. <laughs> in second place, I have Elsa. Okay. So unlike a lot of the princesses on this list, Elsa's arc was actually about her. And she actually played a role in it. So... Yay? <laughs> like I said when I talked about Anna, I really enjoyed the Frozen arc. And watching Elsa sort of come to terms with her magic and her conflicting feelings over Ingrid made her a standout in season 4A. Also, her friendship with Emma was perfect. It was nice to see Emma and Elsa bond over the magic that they never asked for, but were gifted nonetheless. Um, and, you know, even though I addressed my gripes with Anna during the Frozen arc, I really did enjoy Anna and Elsa, Elsa's bond as sisters. So, Elsa, for having a storyline to play in, for her being the central focus of said storyline. And for just kind of being awesome. She's in second. <laughs> um, in first place, I have Tiana. Okay. Tiana was amazing in the new Enchanted Forest. She was also amazing in Hyperion Heights. And... I think, you know, the curse in both season one and season seven changed a lot of the characters' personalities to the point where they weren't as good in their cursed little town. So, like, for, you know, the first six seasons it was Storybrooke, for season seven it was Hyperion Heights. Yeah, their characters in those parts weren't as interesting and as amazing, but Tiana... I think sort of had the most seamless transition from New Enchanted Forest to Hyperion Heights. Um, yeah. And, you know, even when the story plots were not about her, she still managed to be the standout in those scenes. I really wish that she had more storylines than she actually did have like because even the princess and the frog storyline that they went with was more about Dr. Facilier and Naveen and like she was just sort of there for that one and it's like no 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 we need to put her more front and center in that plot but <sighs> overall I think I just wish Tiana had been the central focus of season seven because she was definitely one of the standouts of season seven but we got what we got, but either way, I still enjoyed Tiana the most. So that was my ranking of Once Upon a Time's Disney princesses. That's what we'll call it. Um, let me know in the comments down below what your ranking is, or at the very least, which one is your favorite, which one's your least favorite. I'm really curious to hear what everyone's thoughts are. If you like this video, you can leave a like and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. And make sure you click that notification bell so you'll be notified when I upload my latest videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in another video. Bye, guys.